for Josh Sipps! G'day. I am from Australia. I, uh, I went back there a couple of weeks ago. I live here now. Uh, it was a great trip uh, back, but um, there was a little bit of trouble at the airport here at JFK when I was boarding the flight. Uh, I was discriminated against by the airline. Oh, yeah. Josh, I'm here. <laughs> she works for Qantas. Uh, because of my weight. See, I was checking in and the lady said I had to pay a surcharge because my bag was six pounds overweight. Now, the guy who was checking in in front of me, he must have weighed like 300 pounds. <laughs> he, his bag is just fine. So that's, that's discrimination, isn't it, against me for choosing to put my things in my bag <laughs> instead of in my belly. <laughs> I guess the only way I could have got around the surcharge, according to the airline, would be, I guess, if I ate my luggage, then <laughs> that would be... See, here's how it should go from now on. Uh, if, if anyone in the room works for an airline, <clears throat> then this is what, this is what should happen. Uh, you should get a weight allotment, and, uh, you know, when your bag goes on the scales, so the fuck do you. And <laughs> if you're anorexic and you weigh like 80 pounds, fine, great, bring, bring, bring a baby elephant on board, doesn't matter. But <laughs> if you're 300 pounds, you've got a decision to make. You can pay the surcharge, or you can put the fucking Slurpee down and start jogging around the airport. I'm sorry. It's fair. I've been here a couple of years. I, um, I still don't understand Fahrenheit. Uh, I know that Celsius is confusing uh, to Americans, uh, the way that it pegs the freezing and boiling points of water at zero and 100, <laughs> instead of the more logical 32 and 212. But I still have to carry around a calculator just to figure out what the temperature is. Like, what, what was it, Wednesday or Thursday when it was really cold and rainy here in, here in New York? And I was getting a bit chilly in my apartment and decided to go out and buy a little portable heater. So I go to the store and the salesman goes, well, this little unit will heat up an average-sized apartment by 20 degrees in just 10 minutes. I was like, great, let's have a look at what 20 degrees Fahrenheit is in Celsius. So 20 degrees Fahrenheit equals minus 7. So if my room's 15 degrees Celsius and I turn the heater on, then in 10 minutes it'll be 15 plus minus 7, uh, which is 8 degrees. I'm pretty sure the dude was trying to sell me an air conditioner. <laughs> and there are other things I don't understand in America. The ads for the news here are very... Like in Australia, the ads for the news actually tell you a little bit of news. Here, they, they, they almost kind of tease you. I, I saw one a couple of days ago in the newsreader. The newsreader goes, a major Hollywood star has been arrested. To find out who, tune in at 10. <laughs> well, just, just tell me. I'm not looking forward to when really big news breaks. And it's Bush declares war. To find out against who, tune in Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do, you want to see you want a little impression? How about a little impression, huh? This is my impression of President Bush, okay, being asked by a reporter whether or not he believes that the $9 trillion deficit he's created will put pressure on monetary policy over the coming fiscal year, okay? Will it put pressure on monetary policy over the coming fiscal year? This is Bush's response. No. <laughs> okay, for my next bit, what I'd like to do is talk about something that happened while I was back in Australia. There was a, an item on the news there about a surfer who was killed by a shark while I was, while I was there. Um, while he was surfing, he was taken. And uh, on the news, they were interviewing his best friend. And uh, his best friend was saying, oh, you know, the good thing is, at least he died doing what he loved the most. <laughs> His lucky day, I guess. That, 
it's lucky that, that what he loved doing the most was having his limbs ripped off by a vicious <laughs> sea beast. Because <'cause> if that hadn't been his favourite thing, he probably would have been pretty disappointed about <laughs> the whole thing. Uh, there's a billboard that's gone up near my place here in Chelsea, which is a bit cryptic. It's, um, it's just an image of a male model who's naked, and he's got a towel around his waist. He's leaning seductively against a bathtub and, like, gazing at the camera. And there's nothing on the billboard apart from a web address. So, naturally, I went to the website, and, <laughs> and, he, and it turns out that what the billboard is selling is a new apartment complex. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can advertising in America get any gayer? At what, at what ad agency did someone stand up and go, I know how we can sell those apartments? Gay porn! And everyone else went, brilliant! Real estate, naked men, together at last! But, but the odd thing is, it works. It actually, the most popular brands among straight young American males are the ones with the most homoerotic ad campaigns. Like, when I came from Australia, I didn't know what Abercrombie and Fitch was. I came here and saw a billboard, and then uh, I still had no idea, because it was, you've probably seen the billboard, it's just a naked male torso, and way, 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 way down the bottom, like past his pubes, you can see that he's, <laughs> it, there's this, you can see he's wearing a strip of some, I don't know, I don't know if it's jeans, I don't know if it's a ribbon, I don't know what the fuck he's wearing, but I'm thinking, well, billboards cost a fortune, there's no way that anyone's going to pay for all this space if all they're selling is this, is this little strip. I mean, I could tell by the context, that Abercrombie and Fitch had to be, you know, a couple of gay Scottish guys. But I thought, Scottish guys are never going to pay for all that space if all they're doing... And so it occurs to me, what are they really selling? What are people buying here? They're not buying the jeans or the apartment. They're kind of buying the guy. They're kind of buying the guy who stands there in his towel, gazing out at the straight men of America, with a look that says, I'd pull my pants down for you. <laughs> if I was wearing any, which I'm not. Uh, I saw some religious right protesters down at Tompkins Square Park um, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they, had, they were like anti-gay Christian crusaders, and they had these posters that said, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Have you, <laughs> have you seen these? I guess they think, they think people are gay because they just misread the Bible. Is that... The moment they see the sign, that's just going to straighten everybody out. You know, people will be walking along going, Adam and Eve. I thought it was Adam and Steve. Rodney, come quickly. I think we've made a terrible mistake. It's not, it's not Adam and Steve at all. And why do these people care so much anyway? You know what it says in the Bible? It says that for a man to lie with another man is an abomination. An abomination. But then it goes on and says it's also an abomination to, like, eat shellfish. <laughs> Eating shellfish and having gay sex are the same level of sin, according to God. But the way you hear these people go on about gays, it's filthy, it's disgusting, it's revolting. You never hear them say that about, uh, about crab cakes, you know? <laughs> Not even really, really bad crab cakes. And I think for the sake of consistency, they should. I want to hear people saying, I tell you, if my son ever turned out to be one of them fucking lobster eaters. <laughs> Just saying, I'm not going to have no crustacean muncher living under my roof. That's my time, guys. I'm Josh Zepps. Thanks a lot. You've been great. Josh Zepps, everybody. Josh. Josh Zepps.